Hello and welcome to my next tutorial about PrePomix. This time I will show you how to perform a preloaded model analysis of a plate. So let's create a new model first. Uh, I will use 3D model space and uh, millimeter uh, unit system. And uh, then I will import the geometry and uh, you will see that the geometry in this case is really uh, simple. Uh, since it's uh, just a surface, a rectangular surface, uh, the geometry was mm, generated in FreeCAD, uh, as always, and it represents a rectangular uh, plate that will be subjected to uh, model analysis in two uh, versions. The first one will be uh, without preload, and then the second one will be with tensile preload. So mm, let's define the meshing parameters first. Uh, I will specify the mesh size of uh, five millimeters for this uh, geometry, and I will choose quite do quad dominated mesh, uh, and I will accept this and uh, create the mesh. So the mesh is now created, you can see that it consists only of uh, quad elements, uh, just like expected. Uh, and now mm, I will define uh, material properties. Uh, so let's specify a uh, new material and I will have to define the uh, density. Mm, so for density I will use uh, this value uh, right here and uh, for uh, elasticity I will use uh, the same values as in most uh, tutorials, so just the values for steel. Uh, then uh, I can confirm this and I can create a new section. Of course this will be shell section mm, and uh, I will specify the thickness. Uh, 4 millimeters. I will apply this uh, shell section to uh, the whole plate. Mm, so now I can uh, define the steps. Uh, in this case I will have uh, two steps, but let's define the first one uh, for now. So uh, this will be static step in which we will apply a uh, preload. Um, I don't have to set anything here, I will just accept the default settings and uh, create a step. And now I just need to define the boundary conditions mm, and uh, also uh, loads. So mm, let's define boundary conditions. Uh, here mm, I will specify displacement rotation boundary condition and uh, I will select uh, the, all, all the uh, edges of the plate, uh, so uh, each of the, of the four edges, and uh, I will apply uh, boundary condition in the third direction for all of them uh, to, con to constrain the plate against the rigid body motion. And then uh, I will create another boundary condition uh, and uh, I will apply it to uh, this edge right here. Uh, so let's say that this top edge and I will specify um, uh, displacement uh, in y direction uh, equal to uh, zero. Uh, so mm, that's another boundary condition uh, and the next one will be uh, applied to uh, this edge right here uh, and I will uh, constrain it in uh, x direction. Uh, so mm, that's it when it comes to boundary conditions for this analysis and now uh, I will define uh, loads. So to apply the tensile preload I will use normal shell edge load. Uh, I think that uh, I've never used it in tutorials. Mm, so let's apply to this edge uh, and uh, I will specify the value of minus 120 uh, newtons per millimeter uh, and I will also apply the same uh, kind of load to uh, this edge right here uh, and the same value of uh, 120 uh, newtons per millimeter. So and uh, now both boundary conditions and loads are defined for this uh, step. And now what I can do is uh, create another step. Mm, so uh, I uh, create uh, the next step. Uh, this time it will be frequency step. Uh, and uh, apart from specifying the number of frequencies, which will be uh, free in this case, uh, I also have to mm, select, uh, set the, the per make sure or actually that the perturbation uh, parameter is set to on, uh, so that preloads pre from the previous step are considered. Uh, so mm, I can confirm this mm, and now uh, you can see that uh, boundary conditions from the previous step propag were propagated to the uh, second one. Uh, only the loads were not propagated because we don't use loads in, in, in this type of analysis, uh, but boundary conditions were preserved so mm, I don't have to uh, redefine them this way. Uh, I could also, mm, if I had, for example, if I created mm, those two steps at the same time and uh, define boundary conditions only for the first one, uh, I could also use the uh, propagate option to mm, move the uh, boundary condition also for the, to the second step. Uh, so mm, that's uh, possible if you uh, create uh, those steps in different order. Uh, and uh, actually mm, the whole analysis is now defined uh, and uh, now I can just submit it and check the results. Uh, but I told you that we're going to mm, perform two analysis and compare the results. So the first one uh, will be in the case without uh, preload, so I will just deactivate this static step. 
and we'll only perform the frequency analysis and uh, check the mm, natural frequency that we'll obtain or actually uh, we'll check the first natural frequency uh, and see compare it with analytical solution and then uh, compare it with, uh, with solution uh, considering preload uh, so uh, i'll just uh, submit the analysis now and we already have the results so let's check them and here you can see mm, that we have uh, three different mode shapes we are interested in the first one so that's the, the frequency mm, that we obtained from this analysis and let's compare it with analytical solution uh, here you can find the solution without preload so that's the value that we expect here and then we'll check the value with tensor preload mm, those are uh, formulas taken from uh, this book by uh, Levins so there you can find uh, the formulas uh, including also uh, preload so mm, without the preload we get uh, really good uh, agreement with analytical solution when you compare those values uh, let's uh, see how it would look like if we mm, enable the preload so let's activate this step again and uh, now i'll submit the analysis once again and we'll check the results we already have the results so uh, let's open them and uh, now I just need to switch from this first step, which is uh, not of, of interest here. Uh, I have to switch to, the se switch to the second step. And again, I'm interested in the first mode shape and the frequency associated with this mode shape. Uh, so let's compare it with the analytical solution. And uh, here you can see that again, we are very close uh, to what we obtained in analytical solution. So again, there's, uh, there's a very good agreement uh, with analytical solution based on this formula from uh, Blevins book. Uh, when you compare it to uh, what we obtained from this uh, analysis. Uh, Alright, uh, that's it for this Prepromax tutorial. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. As always, feel free to ask any questions and suggest topics for future tutorials in the comments. Have a nice day and see you in the next video.